Good morning, everyone. My name is Patty Stream, and I'm going to do your July the 5th Spiritual Principle Day in a Meditation. Excited because I have officially achieved, as of yesterday, one full year of this meditation. And so we're going into a year and a day today. So I'm excited about that. I don't know about you, but when I show that I'm consistent, Oh, it just means the world to me personally. Okay. Let's get into that meditation. If you need to reach me, feel free to do so at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. I'm going to start another podcast soon. And so I'll just continue to listen because I will be giving you the details of that channel as well. It has to do more with a book that I've written uh, and I'm still tweaking it, doing the editing, um, but I'm going to be exposing on that podcast some of the topics that I've written about in that book. So you'll definitely want to follow me along to that page, okay, to that channel. So hold on for the details. But in the meantime, let's talk about this beautiful meditation in front of us, Seeking Balance. So many things compete for our attention. And as addicts, we have a tendency to think in extremes, all or nothing, right or wrong. Finding the balance is an ongoing negotiation. That comes from the Living Clean book, chapter one, opening essay. In recovery, when our lives get bigger, our already questionable attention span is pulled in many different directions. We have our NA life and we balance it with work life, school life, home life, family life, sex life, and more. On top of that, we are now able to address the consequences of our using, improving our health, dealing with legal issues, making amends, and many of us are also pursuing our interests and goals that bring us joy. Through using the tools of the NA program, including prayer and meditation, we can maintain a manageable balance of all the above. We are living by spiritual principles as much as humanly possible. We're sincerely grateful more often than we aren't. Oh, I love that. What could possibly go wrong? Sometimes it's a truly life-altering event that will throw us off balance. Or maybe we make a mistake we can't run from, or we don't achieve something we worked hard for and feel we deserve. Other times, if it's only that we spill a glass of water, we'll want to smash the glass and drown ourselves in the water. Seeking balance, both in terms of our inner life and how we spend our time, is an ongoing negotiation, reacting in extremes to our mistakes or what we can't control will wear us out and make us vulnerable to our disease. Just because we're clean and doing well doesn't mean that life will consistently get better and better without fail. We can be vigilant, but we can't prepare for everything. If we have our program as a base and a constant in our lives, we will have spiritual principles, relationships, and a higher power to lean on when life inevitably shows up. Life is unpredictable and can be chaotic. It's the seeking of balance without the chaos that will help keep us clean and moving forward. I can commit to pursuing balance among all areas of my life, but it's just as vital to my recovery that I accept life's chaos without adding to it. What a beautiful meditation. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now. Thank you. God grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change. The courage to change the things that we can, the wisdom to know the difference. 
just for today, please and thank you. Seeking balance. Where are you with that topic? Have you been able to look at your own life? I know that I have. Seeking balance. Okay, so my my home is not a very large home and I have an office, but within that office, I have uh, my husband's former desk that he used to work from. So there's two desks and then there's a desk that has been set up as a makeshift desk. And I use that desk to cut off the part of the room that is really my daily preparation area. So there's a huge mirror on the other side. There's um, my closet. My closet is not a walk-in closet, but my closet runs the length of the room. And so all of my clothes are in there. Um, so it's it's not balanced per se, but I, I was seeking balance. So I began to do things to divide up the room and make it more usable, okay? But there's times when I just don't want to be sitting up in this humongous leather attorney-like chair, right? The chair itself is about a good 150 pounds. It's so heavy. There's times I just don't want to sit in that chair. I want to sit back, relax, throw my feet up, and do the podcast from the living room. And so I sought balance in the living room, and I proceeded to make it a space that I could also do my work if I needed to, be in a different position because of my arthritis. I sought balance in that arena, and I decided to change it so that I would be more comfortable and more productive. Now in my bedroom, and I'm taking you through my house that way because I want you to understand a couple of things and I will point them out when I get through. Now in my bedroom, this is a space where my husband is pretty much most of the day. If, if I'm being honest, because of his health, he doesn't move around a lot because of the level of pain that he is in. It takes everything from him to go from a seated position. He's a former roofer. We had a roofing company. So his back is very bad. So for him to stand up from a seated position, especially if it's too low, is just excruciating. He shakes with pain. So it's been years since he's enjoyed, unless we have company, the living room and we have a beautiful black leather sectional here okay so he spends most of his time in the room I on the other hand I do not enjoy living my life in the room because I have insomnia and so if I don't treat that space as a space only for sleeping I won't even get the three to four hours a night that I do get of sleep, okay? However, I do enjoy being in my husband's presence. And so I have an easy boy chair that accommodates me that I'm able to use and sit in and throw my feet up and get them off the ground. And I sit there and I look through my Facebook, look at YouTube, look at reels, study. I do different things, but they're not those important things that are important to me and what I do for a living, right? It's just an in entertainment type situation. I sit there in the easy boy chair. And then when I'm ready to retire, I retire to the bed on the other side of the room. I accommodate it for the purpose to find balance by putting that chair in there, okay? So here we go. Your house is you. That's the comparison. And you have different areas within your being that are out of balance. 
sometimes people just focus on the physical part of it. I'm out of shape and I need to get in shape. And they start getting into shape and bring that into balance. Sometimes they're worried about the financial part of it. I'm worried I need to work more hours. I'm going to save more money, spend less money on these um, streaming services and so on and so on. A lot of times the thing that we do not recognize how much power it plays in our lives and we do not bring balance to it is our mental health. A lot of times we try to balance the home life, the family life, sex life, school life, work life, in a life. We may have to deal with legal issues. We try to bring all of these things that are us into balance without focusing at all on the mental health that we have, right? And our mental health and our spiritual health are deeply connected. So if I want for my mental health to be more balanced, and be able to actually handle all of these other things and organize them, I have to go to that area of my being, right? Like I said, that area of my house that is out of balance. And I have to bring that spiritual person, those spiritual issues, right? My spiritual being, I have to bring that into balance, my spirituality. And the way that I do that is by taking a look at it. I look at it, I analyze it, and then I make the needed, the needed adjustment. I know you're getting the message, right? I, I know that you are. In order to not only just seek balance, but find it, we do need to focus on our spirituality. Here we are again at the 11th step. Take the barriers off of the 11th step. Stop trying to fit your spirituality into the box of someone else's spirituality. And allow yourself through prayer and meditation to actually analyze what the needed adjustments are for balance. Now, I hope that helps you. Today, move forward in your day with positivity and believing. I got this. I can do this. I am actually going to spend some time taking notes on my spirituality, my style of prayer and meditation, and see how I can increase time to be able to do that. And I guarantee you, if you bring that into balance, some of these other things on the exterior part that you're connected to, they will naturally fall into balance. You know why? Because when you come to them to take a look at them and bring them into balance, you'll be dealing with a, a person that is feeling well, that is happy, that is joyous, that is free, that has faith. Oh, it can't be, be denied. This is a beautiful meditation. Have a beautiful day on purpose. And I will be talking to you tomorrow. I'm going to have a beautiful day on purpose as well. <laughs>